For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says Yahweh. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the sower and bread for food, so will my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will carry out my will achieving the end for which I sent it. And you will go out joyfully and be led out in peace. The mountains and hills before you will break into cries of joy and all the trees in the countryside will clap their hands. The cypress will grow in place of the thorn bush. The myrtle will replace the briars and they will stand as a memorial to Yahweh, an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Santa Sabiduria, Santa Palabra. Gracias. Yes, adios. Our storyteller today is Carol Harmon, but before we hear Carol's story, um, we have special music that we are gonna share with you today. Uh, we have a choir anthem, correct? or do something because that was beautiful thank you choir thank you for making well that done. beautiful mm -hmm. all right friends one of our matriarchs in the in the community carol Harmon, uh is going to be sharing her story today um around this theme well i actually don't even know what you're going to talk about carol but the overall theme is living on the edge and you've lived on lots of edges um, <laughs> so we welcome you carol and are grateful for um uh, for your sharing with us today your willingness yes 
Okay, can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me, okay, yeah. all right. Um, I want to do a little preface here. Uh, we've written, I've, I've written out well what I, you know, Dick got it all, you know, printed out for me, but I decided I wanted to make a little preface here before. So I'm taking this to do and I'm going to have to read it. And so I hope that my, my voice stays together. Um, the preface is sometimes it's not good to love someone a lot. I love Allie. I love Allie a lot. So there's a knock on our door. Um, um, just a few days ago. Um, and I am surprised and pleased to see that it is Allie. She says, I wonder if you would consider telling your story on Sunday. Um, I think I said, um, no, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> well, mull it over, she said. But I need to know soon because if you say no, I've got to get find somebody else who will do it. But I really hope that you will do it. And um, and I will um, and just tell a little bit of your story. So here I am. I, you know, love does that. I, I cannot disappoint Allie. And so here's what I'm doing. Okay. This, can you see it? It's a picture of me. Okay. Our daughter Tasha took it. This time last year, I was in four hospitals over 30 days from a combination of heart failure, poor circulation, leftover rheumatitis, rheumatitis, rheuma, you know what that is, um, and a tangle of meds. None of the doctors had a solution. I was sick of the hospitals. I demanded to go home. The family brought me home. We all agreed, no more meds. And when the time came, I would die at home. I was happy to be at home. But toward the end of October, I was again in crisis, close to death. Dick called both Nancy Phelps and Matt Smith because they were deeply experienced in hospice care. Hospice came and neighbors and 11 friends set me up in a hospital bed. At the peak of the crisis, Dick opened the front and back doors of the house and turned on the fans so friends and family could come under COVID. All those people came with prayers, <clears throat> games, songs. Our home was filled with spirit in healing. So they spent all of a late afternoon and early evening at my bedside singing mostly children's songs, whether I was awake or asleep. In a day or two, the two young boys from next door, Sebastian and Julian, brought their violin and cello over and played musical, classical music um, from our front uh, sidewalk. You should have seen them there. They were so sweet. The next day, Chuck King st <clears throat> uh, stood on our front sidewalk with his guitar and sang folk songs to me.
that Sunday, Oh, for both of those things, uh, gifts, I was happy and I, it made me cry. That Sunday, the Seat of the Pants Choir came to sing. It was cold and close to raining. Just before they began, Dick and Tasha got me into a wheelchair, wrapped me in a big warm blanket, and we came out onto the front porch. The sun came out and my family and friends and this big blanket kept me warm. That's how I was in, <clears throat> this is how I was in this, you can see, whoops, can you see it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Let's see, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, I began to get, um, get better and then better and better. Thanks to my family and friends from Levin and Salt and Light and getting rid of the meds. And on our block, our friends continue to greet me and ask me if I need anything or tell me how happy they are to see me up and walking with my cane and a friend and occasionally without my cane or in the backyard, another healing place. So that's the preface. Hmm? That's the preface. So that's my story. Um, you cannot know, you cannot know how, how important and how blessed I am to have you um, all there to be with me. I want, I want to be I want to be alive with, with Dick. I want to be alive with Dick. Thank you. Great. I would be grateful if there were any reflections of yours about this. Mm. Mm. Well, let's take a moment just of silence to take in your story, Carol. Um, but what, what I'd like to do is to invite us into, um, into breakout rooms to give people just a little more kind of one-to-one -one time to reflect and to listen for any uh, deeper reflections or questions that you want to share in the plenary. We will have... Um, We'll probably have a good 10 minutes or so in in the full group after breakout room. So we will have a lot of time to to share reflections and questions. Mm -hmm.